Welcome back to my channel. Get the latest money saving hacks and recommendations here as we keep life full, fit, and fun. I learned some hacks we can do on the budget friendly Android car multimedia player, and in today's video, I'm going to share the hacks with you. Some are more useful than others, some are just plain good to know, and ultimately, they are all interesting to implement in the car with such an affordable device. So stay tuned and don't miss any of it. I don't have a sponsor at the time of making this video, but if you're a sponsor, and you would like to put a link to your fantastic product in the description, get in touch with me. If you are a viewer, check the description at the end of the video to get a good product deal from the sponsor. We will be looking at how to choose the startup logo, how to assign control buttons, and how to display vehicle information like speed, temperature, corner sensors, and so on, on the screen. Before we get into the main video, let's talk about a spec that's needed to run an Android player smoothly. We need at least 4 gigabytes of RAM. That's the first number we see in the 432, 464, or 664 when we see an ad for the player. Anything with a 2, like a 2 slash 16, 2 slash 32, will never make it. They will lag. They run so slowly. We can only run one app on such a device. We cannot run two apps simultaneously. We can't run a music app in the background and uh, Google Maps in the foreground. It's just impossible. We will reach our destination even before Google Maps finish finding the route. 4 gigabytes of RAM is the bare minimum for apps to run smoothly on Android. That's why phones today come with a minimum of 4 gigabytes of RAM. Anything less than 4 gigabytes, don't even think about it. It's the same for Android car players. Did you know we can choose a startup logo for the Android player? How cool is this? Let's say I feel like a Lamborghini today and when I hop into my Toyota, I power up the Android player. I want to see the Lamborghini logo popping up. It's possible and this is how we can do it. Go to settings, look for factory setup, click on it, enter the password. It's usually 8888 or 0000, or in my case, it's 1234. Go to Boot Logo. These are the preloaded logos. You can also upload your own. Just plug in your USB stick and click Choose a Path. I haven't tried this, but I'm pretty sure it will accept J JPEGs and PNG file formats. Go back to choose a preloaded logo. I see Volkswagen and many other familiar brands, Audi, Subaru, Porsche, is that Porsche? Ah, uh, BMW. I'm looking for Lamborghini. Here it is. Select and click OK to confirm. I'm going to restart the player now. Go to the previous screen. Previous again. More settings. System settings. System restart. OK. There it is, Lamborghini logo on boot up. Okay, next, the buttons on the side of the screen can be reassigned to do certain commands, like skipping to the next song. This is useful because my steering wheel does not have the skip button and it costs $200 to get one installed. I want to save money. And when Google Maps is running on full screen, a terrible song comes on. What do I do? I want to skip it immediately. And this is how we can do it. Go to Settings, Factory Setup. One, two, three, four for the password. Look for Touch Button Learning. The blue and black buttons on the screen are all the commands we can assign to the touch buttons on the left. The blue ones have been assigned. So what I'm going to do now is to assign the third button, which is currently doing the back command, to become skip to next song. But before we start, make sure we have an extra back button, which this player has, right here at the top right hand corner, so that uh, we will still have a back button to use when we need to use it. To start the reassigning, touch start at the bottom left hand corner. At this point, all the buttons on the left has become blank and we will assign a command to each of them individually. 
touch the power command and touch the first button, touch the home command and touch the second button. Now touch the next command and touch the third button. Next, volume plus and fourth button. Volume minus and fifth button. Alright, we are done. Touch end. Go back and uh, let's test it out. I'm going to play music in the background and run Google Maps in the foreground. And uh, see if the third button skips to the next song. Third button, here I come. Yes, it's working. Last but not least, and the most interesting, the CAN bus. The CAN in CAN bus stands for Control Area Network. It's a protocol, a data communication standard that car parts manufacturers use to send and receive information across devices in a car to automate stuff. For example, the doors lock up when the car starts moving beyond a certain speed. When it rains, the sensor tells the windscreen wipers to start wiping, or as simple as displaying the speed of the car on the dash. Depending on what kind of information schema is available in the car's CAN bus and what the Android player was programmed to display or interact with it, we will get very different capabilities and functionalities depending on the player and car combinations. To get the Android player connected to CAN bus, this is how we can do it. Go to Settings, Factory Setup, 1, 2, 3, 4, OK. Look for CAN Settings. Look for your car make and model, Toyota. My car's model is not listed here. I will just um, choose a random one. It doesn't work on my car, but I'll just uh, run through the steps and we'll look at the differences between different make and models. Let's just uh, select Alpha. Done with the CAN bus selection. Click OK. Let's head on over to the Car Info app. Here's where we get the CAN bus information and the controls for a Toyota Alpha. It has climate controls and information. Fuel information. Tire pressure monitoring system. Let's now try another car. Let's try Volkswagen Golf. It looks different and uh, it looks like it has less integration than the Toyota Alpha. And that's it. I hope it has been useful for you. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe, like, share, and hit the super thanks button. Your support means a lot to me. See you in the next video. Bye.